You have been known to disagree with the Council before. Yours could become an important voice in the new order, second only to my own. I offer you a chance for greatness, Jorel. Take it! Join us! You will bow down before me, Jorel. I swear it! No matter that it takes an eternity! Radio right here at FreedomSlips.com, the number one listener-supported radio station in the world. And now it is time for the man of steel himself, Mr. Mike Harris, with the short end of the stick. So are you ready, Mike? Because here it comes. It's all yours. Take it away. Good morning and welcome. This is Mike Harris broadcasting on VeteransToday.com. You can go to the webpage, and there's a live radio link there you can hook in. We're also broadcasting on www.freedomslips.com, Studio B Revolution Radio. Uh, welcome to the show. Today is Wednesday, June 3rd, 2015, and my guest, as promised, is Dr. Elia Kostova. Elia, welcome to the show. How are you? Yeah, hello, Mike. I'm really fine, and thank you very much for your I- invitation to be guest of your famous show. I really enjoy your show for so long time. Well, thank you so much, and, and really the, the, the pleasure is mine. And you and I had the opportunity to meet uh, in person, face-to-face, at uh, the opening at uh, Loom University, which is the, the Liberia University of the Mediterranean, where the Keshe Foundation had opened up the, the new physics department at Loom called the Spaceship Institute. That was the first time I met you, and it, it's my pleasure. And, and since then, you and I had uh, dinner with, with others, of course, and socialized and, and got to know each other. And, uh, you know, I, I just want to thank you so very, very much for, for you know, giving up your valuable time to, to come on board and, and to tell the people a little bit about what you do. And let, let me go ahead and, and give them an uh, introduction. You're, you're a medical doctor. Yes. And you have expertise both in the Western allopathic process as well as in the Eastern, uh, what we would call here in the United States, uh, holistic uh, alternative type medicine. Is, uh, is that, am I getting it right? Yeah, is right. Okay, good. So you know, let's the the reason for having you on the show is that there are some very wonderful things within the Western allopathic approach. However, there's also some very critical things missing in the Western allopathic approach to uh, to medicine. And so what what I wanted to kind of do is just give our listeners an overview. Of, of what those differences are and, and how they can, uh, you know, incorporate some of the things that are more Eastern, holistic, alternate oriented uh, to, to maintain health going forward. Yeah, it's a really interesting uh, subject. And the last uh, 20 years of my life, I just passed to investigate and explore what is the really connection between East and West. Because um, when uh, we see in our hospitals in the West and in the healer's place in the East, there are huge difference for the first sign. But actually, when you, you start to investigate both m- medical techniques, how we, we say allopathic and uh, holistic, they have so closer point, but different kind of explanation because uh, the West has some kind of lack of knowledge of the East, and East has some kind of lack of knowledge of the West. So, and the best solution is to combine two medical techniques from the West and from the West, because they have them benefits, and it's better when you, uh, you use both of them. Actually, um, 
how you mentioned it, I'm, I'm a medical doctor and with specialty internal medicine. I passed a lot of years in a cardiology department emergency. So on my hand, uh, every day, just dependent a lot of lives and really emergency of your shortness of your thinking and uh, to be able uh, to say what is going on on the moment. And uh, you just, uh, how to say, like a person i just train myself to take uh, the so, uh, the short decision for the short time to be able to save the life of the person and everything starts be before 20 years exactly in the cardiology department and when i saw that um, i'm able to save the life with western medicine but uh, this person comes to me after 10 days again I again help him and again after 10 days it comes to me. So I start to ask myself why is uh, happen like this? Actually, I'm not uh, healing this person, cannot say even curing this person. I just gave him some kind of relief and after 10 days he's come to me again. I save his life, he's alive, but he is not a social active, he's not happy, he's depressed, he's under control of so many of so many medications. And actually I see that this person is just living. He's not alive, he's just living. So I start to ask myself, what is the truth? Where is the truth? It mean is something missing in the hospitals and everything what I know. Uh, in Western medicine. So I start to searching in different kind of alternative medicine and educate myself all over the world. And finally, after 20 years, I just collect a lot of knowledge from different parts of the world. And uh, in the West, even now it's fashion to, quali uh, to make a classification of all our alternative methods and complementary methods and they are more or less like a 600 actually they are more but they are classified in, in the list like a 600 but have a difference what i want to mention here because it's uh, important in this classification what is the difference between uh, alternative and complementary medicine holistic medicine. So alternative part is the method who is able to be base, to be curable of the person, to use like a base. And uh, uh, other part of the world is, is the method who you add to that alternative method, to that base method. Like alternative, we may say that is the West medicine somehow. Ayurveda, naturopathy, and uh, homeopathy, and uh, uh, traditional Chinese and Tibetan medicine. They give you base. They are like a theosophy of living, theosophy of life, what actually is mean and the word Ayurveda. So other 600 methods, they, they are more or less, they are supposed to add to the base uh, and uh, have some kind of, um, this is not only science, but this is actually how to say, this is uh, create the healing process for the person. This is uh, for uh, the healer first joy, and this is artistic job. Because you're supposed to find out which one method you, you um, have to use first, then second one, and then, and then the third one, because with, with each method you uh, repair part of your machine on the name of human body. This is not a method which is cure everything. Well, 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 let, me, let me ask yeah? a question here. Uh, yeah. So what, what, what I'm hearing you say is that certain parts do certain things very well, like the, the, the Western practices do some things very well. Yeah, the Eastern practices. In emergency, for yeah. example, when you have operation to diagnose your body, like uh, MRA, X-ray, all the uh, echography, what you are able to do, you know, it well, is well, visualization well, me, of of the body. Let, let, let me get this straight. So, the Western medical approach is good for acute symptoms, you know, things that are happening now that are short term that that have to be addressed immediately. Whereas the Eastern approach, uh, you know, the homeopathy, the holistic approach, that is more 
addressing chronic things that are that are go on long term. That if you address them long term, they'll never become a problem. Is, is, am I am I getting yeah. that right? Yeah, this is one part. Another part is that holistic approach is take care about all your existence. This is not only your human body. This is all your life and and your energy system, your belief system, your understanding, all your existence. And uh, allopathy it is more or less treat your body like a part. This is your liver. I'm treated. This is your heart. I'm treated. This is everything. This is sum of organs. This is not like one machine. This is not uh, allopathy. Not looking uh, the human body like one machine. And if it's something is not in order, the everything is not in order. And what is the cause of this disorder? Because um, uh, the physical symptoms, they are a result of emotional or uh, psychology problem or others. The physicality react last. And actually the allopathic medicine is so good to investigate physicality, physical body, to be visible what is the uh, diseases, what is the pathoanatomy, pathophysiology, how goes the um, chemical reactions is inside of, of the cells. But everything that is a physical body. And uh, allopathy is not able to find out what is the cause of this disorder, of this disharmony, what you experience with your physical body. And well, let, 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 the holistic let, let, do that. Let, let me try to give an example. Yeah. All right, so a guy has high blood pressure. Okay. But he has a really stressful life. So he goes wow. in to see the Western doctor, and the Western yeah. doctor says, here, take these pills. These will measure, these will manage your high blood pressure for you. But yeah. they don't do anything for his stressful life. He still lives the stressful life. So if he stops taking the pills, the blood pressure comes back, the high blood pressure comes back. Whereas yeah. if, if he would address the stress issues in his life that he's having to contend with, maybe the, the blood pressure problem would take care of itself. Did, did I get that right? Yeah, if you're able to do from, uh, to yourself alone. You have so many people, they are aware of what is going on with them. But the awareness of the Western people, it is so less. They even, they don't know themselves. They don't recognize even their emotional states. And they have a habit to take abuse for everything instead to sort it out the problem. So if you're not able to help along to yourself, you go to the therapist who is able to analyze your case and to say where this is the seed of your problem. You understand? Because yes, yes. In, in, in the holistic medicine, we say that the situation is nothing wrong with any situation. It's wrong of your acceptance, how you accept this situation. For some people, uh, one situation can be stress, for other cannot be. It is your acceptance, how you react to the situation. No, I understand that very, yeah. very, very well. See, things that, that some of the things that I enjoy, other people would find very stressful. You know, I, I, I like being in a demanding job. I, I like uh, having challenges ahead of me, things, that, problems that I can solve. And, and you're doing such, it, it brings me great joy. Other people might, you know, uh, say, oh, this is awful. What a terrible job. I, I, I can't stand this. It's making me crazy. <laughs> you know, and, and so the, it just depends on the individual in, in what their, their capacity is, if, if I'm hearing you right, if I'm understanding. Mm -hmm. It is right. But mostly in the, in the East, they say, do the things that make you happy. If you don't make you happy, they are not for you. You, <laughs> you distract with the... Uh, energy field of you and uh, of environment, and because of that, you I irritate. That is them understanding. So, so what what, what happens when a, a person puts themselves in a, in a state where they're they're chronically unhappy for whatever reason? Well, what what can they expect? What what, what do you typically see as a, as a as a doctor? As a doctor, if you ask me, like a Western doctor, this is the depression. And the first thing which is starts to react, this is the digestive system like a stomach. Mostly people get uh, ulcer. And uh, we call that the um, personality A. This is the stressful life, the fast life, fast food. Uh, so many um, sleepless nights, 
Do you understand? So the first react, the, sl uh, the sleep part, you cannot sleep properly. You think all the time what is going on tomorrow, how to solve this problem. I will, I'm able to earn this money. They will pay me. They will, I will quit the job. I do this. I do that. So it's regarding that your uh, central nervous system starts to react with releasing of uh, specific neurotransmitters of the stress. So they trigger your endocrine system, which is your peripheral regulator of all internal organs. And then from endocrine system, you start to get the symptoms inside of uh, the stomach. It is like the digestive system in your heart and or in um, circulation like um, high blood pressure. That kind of, uh, this is the first symptoms when you get the stressful life in the western part oh, okay I, I understand so um yeah. you know let, let, let's talk about it because in, in western life if, if a guy is chronically stressed uh one of the things they'll do is offer him uh maybe anti-anxiety medicines maybe valium yes. maybe xanax maybe something yes and and, yeah. then, and then then he found he can he can sleep yeah but and, this is not solution this is the relief to the moment and actually you make your central nervous system sleepy uh, it means you have a uh, triggering, but your central nervous uh, system is not react. And it even is worse because get habit to not react. And then it's opposite process when you stop the drugs. Okay, so, so what happens? What happens? So you actually damage more yourself. I, I, instead of sorting out the problem, you make second one. If you have hyper reaction for something and you uh, sort it out with pills, this hyper reaction, then you go to hyper reaction. Do you so, understand? So, no, I, Instead I, I, of jumping, you you are not jumping anymore for nothing. Okay. 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 Yeah. I, I, I think I get it. So if, if someone goes on, let's say Valium, and they're on Valium for a long time, They've mm -hmm. changed how their nervous system behaves, and when they stop the volume, then what happens to them? What 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 can what can expect as, the as, as system, Yeah, the nervous system is not able anymore to produce the same amount of neurotransmitters because get a habit that less amount is enough. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm not sure I follow that, but I'll, I'll go ahead and take it for for, for an answer. But you know, how how do people? free themselves, rid themselves of, of uh, pharmaceutical dependency. Because in the West, many, many, many people are what I call polypharmaceutical. They'll, they're, they're not taking a drug. They're taking three, four, five drugs a day every day. And we know that can't be good. And that seems to be the, the, the Western paradigm is to, as you get older in particular, they start prescribing more drugs for you. Uh, what what alternatives? How how can people free themselves from from this? It is actually if you uh, ask me east point of view, you're supposed to change all all your view to the life, uh, to start from belief system, to diet, to way of living, to way of acceptance the life, and then you start to make completely new decisions how you want to live your life and, once, and what you want to achieve in your life. And then actually you start to understand your body and take the, system, uh, the symptoms like when you have some kind of symptom, you understand that something's wrong going, going on with you. And, and you start to understand your machine, what I call human body, but actually this is the perfect biological machine. So... You're supposed to change your point of view to the life, how to accept the life. And if something is, is uh, stressing you and not make you happy, just to change our point of view or to change the things what are you doing. This is the first thing what you're supposed to do. Because if you stay all the time on the trigger point, it cannot be you escape the situation. I mean, to not damage yourself because all the time your nervous system is on a max and react. Do you well, understand? Well, yeah, that, that, that's part of what, what the West is about. I, I, I noticed that, you know, whenever I was a little kid, uh, you grew up in the Eastern Bloc. You grew up in what, R Romania, I think it was? 
Bulgaria. I'm B Bulgarian. B B Bulgaria. Okay. So you yes. grew up in Bulgaria. I grew up in, in the U.S. And mm -hmm. when we were little kids, I mean, in kindergarten, you know, five-year-old kids, they had us hide under our desk in case the nuclear bomb went off. And, and what this did is it put such a sense of fear into us as little children. We thought we were going to get blown up a, any day that the bomb was going to go off. And we, we, mm -hmm. we, we've lived in the West with this type of overriding anxiety, many of us, for our, our entire lives. Yeah. And, and so, you know, it, it's no wonder that, that, that people in the West are anxious and have stress problems and, and all of the, the health issues that go with it is, is because that's how our governments have been conditioning us. I mean, yes. if, if you watch television, I mean, if, if you watch TV, uh, there's serial killers on, on every street corner. There, there, there's millions of them out here going to kidnap you and kill you or, or kidnap your children. It, it just, it, it's just a, uh, we live in a, a media culture of violence that, uh, that, that really victimizes anyone who participates or watches uh, anything in, in this Western culture. It's become very destructive and, and, and somewhat sick. And aggressive. Western culture is so aggressive. It, it is. No, it, it, it's no aggressive. Tolerance. But what, what it reminds me of is if you've ever been to the dog pound, you know, where, where the, uh, they, they take stray dogs. And in mm -hmm. the U.S., uh, this is a big thing. Go to, go to the Humane Society. Mm -hmm. Occasionally, they have dogs that are so afraid that they'll bite anybody that comes near them. They, they appear to be very aggressive, but truly, they're, they're very, very afraid. And that's really what I think is going on um, with, 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 the, uh, with the U.S. and why they have such, a, such an aggressive stance is because they're scared to death. Yeah, and if you remember, we get this conversation with you when we spoke about the difference between the the, uh, the Eastern countries and, and the West, and we make a discussion about the chakra system and the frequency, if you remember. So the fear is, is the low frequency um, feeling. And during the television and uh, the life, what you have in the in the U.S. This is like might control and put your system in, in the vibrational state so low. So you all the time you feel yourself that uh, someone put you suddenly in the jungle, and in front of you is lion. So your um, adrenal gland all the time secret adrenaline in the full max. Do you understand? Oh, ab ab that, ab absolutely. I, I understand? agree with that. I, I agree that, that so, the, the so people in, in the U.S. Uh, really have a, uh, a fearful life. It, it's, a, it, it's a fearful, uh, um, tough you know, way to live. I mean, there, there, there's never time to relax. There's never time to enjoy yourself, it seems. Yes. It, it's something you have to uh, uh, work on. Yeah, and also this is because uh, I have a lot of patients, Bulgarians, but they are now living in the U.S. And uh, from the beginning, kids has a lot of uh, have a lot of problem in the kindergarten. And one of the problem was like if two kids just um, pinch each other, the the teacher is is not sorted out the problem. I say, hey, come on, guys, just sit and talk and sort it out the problem. No, he say, no, no, do it, do it. Who is is the first and who and um, if someone is is the sh uh, champion to pitch more other one, this is the champion for the day. And for us Bulgarians, this is not acceptable because for us the kids they are our goal. You know, you are so family oriented society. And uh, we actually grow, um, how is it in English exactly, ground up our kids like, you know, in, in peace, in nature, with that kind of people. And uh, kids, Bulgarian kids just react really strange. They uh, didn't know what to do and get the depression the first years. And... Uh, the school um, doctors start to give them some kind of medications, you know, they're just sitting in one chair and looking in one point because they're not able to accept that aggressive reality. Do you understand? Yes, so I, my point yeah, of yes, view yeah, is, yes, is that so, this so, is the so belief really. system.
Do you understand? This is from the kindergarten and the schools in US. They, they make a belief system that you're supposed to do these things and you're supposed to react on that way and, and you're supposed to accept the life in, in that shadow. Okay, so, so, yeah, so what happens when a, a Bulgarian family moves from Bulgaria to the U.S., the children yeah. then are exposed to a culture shock via the school system to where they're, they're yes. thrown into this hyper-aggressive, hyper-competitive yes. U.S. school system. Yeah. And, and as a Bulgarian child, not being raised in that culture, it shocks no. them quite a bit. It, it, they go, huh? Absolutely. And, and they, they yeah. don't know how to react. They cannot accept these things. Because... Okay, so, I'm not saying that here it is heaven. No, just uh, how we uh, accept the kids. And if I see two kids just beating each other, I will never say, come on, come on, do it, do it, do it. N no one of us on the street, on the school, kindergarten, never. Do you understand? So for them, this is the culture shock. This teacher to come and say, come on, come on, do it, do it, to see who, who will be the first. So, so in other words, you're talking about like schoolyard fights and things that, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, that in, in the U.S. there, there's it, a culture of, of, a, of a, yeah, like all, all the kids will get around to watch the fight. Yes, yeah, but, but in, in Bulgaria, uh, that that people will say, no, no, don't, don't you be stupid, stop yeah. this, stop this, or nonsense. speak or explain to the kids it's not good to do. What is the problem? Just sit to sort it out, you know. Yeah, I, I, I do know. I, I, I understand exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, we, you know, we were at the Cash Foundation there, and yes. uh, a lot of new concepts came out about medicine and healing uh, yeah. via Mr. Cash, uh, via the Italian PhD that he was working with who had that diagnostic device. Why don't we talk about that a little bit? Because I, I know there, there's a lot of interest. Uh, people don't even know they're interested in it yet. But uh, let, let's talk about what Mr. Cash talked about there. What, what's your read on, on his take to health and medicine? Uh, Mr. Cash, I have honor to know Mr. Cash. And uh, before five years, uh, when I finish one of my educations around the world, I, I just say that it's nothing more to learn. And uh, suddenly I just found out in the Internet uh, about the Kiev uh, foundation and Mr. Cash and his investigation in the plasma technology and I say to myself so that's it I that uh, this knowledge I supposed to know to help to people this is the last one and this is the uh, revolution for our planet and uh, during the years I partly partly start to understand what is the plasma in in the healing process and and uh, it's really amazing it's amazing thing what you are able to achieve with the uh, technology of uh, Mr. Cash. He's my last teacher, and I really have an honor to know him. Okay, well, well, hang on for a minute, yeah, yeah because yes. we've got a, we got a short break, about yeah, yeah. Uh, three okay. or four minutes. So, so hang yes. tight, folks. Yes. We'll, be, we'll be back shortly more with Dr. Ilya Kostova from Bulgaria, and stick with us. We'll be right back after the short break. Good afternoon and welcome back. This is Mike Harris broadcasting on VeteransToday.com. Go to the website. There's a live radio link. You can listen live there or go to www.freedomslips.com, Studio B, Revolution Radio. Today is Wednesday, June 3rd, 2015. My guest today is Dr. Ilya Kostova. And uh, before we go on to the show, I want to ask everyone to go to the uh, Freedom Slips website. There's a donate button. This is listener-supported radio. Uh, all the money that comes in is, is gifted from, from listeners. So please go on there and give 5 or $10. We've got to keep the lights on. We've got to keep this going. We've got to keep uh, getting these type of messages out there. That being said, uh, uh, Ilya, welcome back How, you know, what, to the show. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, hello yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah. It, it, it's good to have you. And, and let, let, let's talk, not a little, let's talk a lot about this approach of plasma. And it, yeah. it, it appears that many of the Western theories of medicine about how the human body works yes. aren't accurate. They, if this plasma theory is correct, as, as Cash seems to think it is, then everything that our, our Western medicine has been taught is not the accurate Wait, it's not 
the better way of, of achieving optimum health for people. So well, why don't you, you tell them what it is and, and give us your understanding of, of how it all works because that, that night when we were um, at Armin's Beach House there in uh, Tranny, you, you gave one of the most eloquent uh, discussions and explanations of this that I'd ever heard. Yeah, that was for uh, the new German medicine and how we are able regarding the plasma technology to explain what uh, Dr. Hammer achieved with new German medicine, actually, and what is his approach. And uh, during uh, his time, uh, he was able to explain uh, the trauma, emotional trauma, and, and how this emotional trauma we are able even to see in MRI pictures and exactly uh, the picture of the brain was showing some kind of image, uh, specific shape. He is able to recognize what is the emotional trauma this person just um, experienced during the life and then he got a cancer. So uh, regarding the plasma technology, also we are able to recognize the seat of the problem. And um, this is really so huge topic because um, the plasma technology of, of Mr. Cash actually is his combination. That is the really amazing thing. This is the combination of everything of East and everything of West. Because on the theosophy and understanding, this is like on the East. But uh, if you want to visualize and to show to the people how it's working, you're supposed to use all the technique of the West to visualize uh, the next particle after the, uh, the quark. This is the Gans particles to visualize them and to show and to prove that they exist. So the next level exist you're supposed to visualize in the human body and uh, or in some kind of investigation what you do to prove the theory you you're supposed to show because still we use our eyes and with our eyes we are able to uh, detect the range of uh, the light and images and everything what they exist beyond and above we are not able to recognize so we have to put everything what mr cash explained of this range to um, be able people to say uh, to see it and for themselves to understand that the next level of our existence is is the guns and what is the meaning of guns this is the magnetical gravitational field what actually we are uh, combination of electromagnetic field particles and they organize themselves in the more complex particle more complex particle they how much you stick the particles to each other they start to be more solid more solid more visible and finally we reach the solid state of matter so now he uh, now um, his purpose is to give to humanity this knowledge and the humanity be able to understand how actually the human body is built, how the universe is built. Actually, he makes the connection between the microcosmos and microcosmos because all the organization of universe, of organization of human body, of animal, of the trees, of all the plants, of the atom, of the molecule, it is one thing. But because we have um, folders in our brain, we separate all the science in different folders to be more easy easy for us with our capacity what what we use now in our century of our brain to understand but actually he wants to combine everything and to explain to the people that see people this is even more simply and even more easy to understand how everything is going on from the beginning so that is actually the plasma uh, technology what he wants to give to humanity with explanation with all the fields like a health, like a agriculture, like a space, like a transportation, is like a cleaning of environment because the seat is one. Just when you implement in different um, sectors of the life, you uh, actually use different kinds of equipments, but the seat 
how to build and how to understand. This is actually that magra field with our, uh, our body are made and everything around us in our planet. Well, well how, how do we use this technology then to influence the human body to maintain it into a, a healthy state? What, what's, what, what, what are, how, how does this, how do we apply this? Okay, I may give you one simple example and more a scientific uh, example regarding uh, the Kiev technology. So, it's the more simple example what I, <clears throat> sorry, made soon, I nanocoat with the Armen uh, silver coupon needles. We nanocoat the head part of this combined metal needles, what is the cooper? So actually the head of a acupuncture needle is this nano-coated cooper and uh, the stick what you pinch the skin is this silver, it is not um, nano-coated. And you know this experiment from the beginning, but before day I have a case with Meniere syndrome and I sorted out this case with these needles for five minutes. Five minutes, the patient got relief, and after the 40 minutes, have anything of any symptoms. And uh, <clears throat> before that, only with acupuncture, normal needles, these cases take like uh, 10 days, 14 days, and with traditional medicines, they take a month sometimes. Do you understand? Yeah, so, so, so it shortens, shortens everything. Uh, you know, shorten, uh, and, and, and uh, actually, it is for short time. And I hope it is not come back soon, but I, n I just now start to use it and I have to make investigation. What is my plan? Just to make investigation and to make, and, and to make the scientific paper and to show how we are able to combine different kind of science what now we have available in our planet. So more scientific explanation is, so when you have some kind of disease inside of your body, so uh, in the easy way, Mr. Cash explain about the cancer because everyone is familiar with this disease. For example, breast cancer. This breast cancer have emotional cause. So we will be not discuss this at the moment, but we will be discuss more technical part. So the breast cancer, this is organization of the magra fields. I say again, this is magnetical uh, gravitational fields. We they organize in the different disharmonic way regarding all the mammary glands. So they, they solidify in one place. So the question is how to take it out from your body, these fields out, without damage anything around. But <clears throat> actually with surgery and chemotherapy, you do. You damage the cells. So the essence of the plasma um, technology is, is to not distract anything, just to take it out, to replace and to make the conditions this... Um, process what at the moment exists to not appear anymore, to condition, to change the conditions and this process to not feel comfortable to exist anymore and to um, they, they evolute itself. So when you have a breast cancer in the, mammar, in, in the mammary gland, you make the same equipment what contain the same magra fields like that breast cancer. So actually because the first law in, in the uh, plasma fields is that similar attracts similar. So when you get the magra fields what they're similar to the process what you want to extract, they're supposed to be same or little stronger to just to take it out. It's like you drinking uh, some kind of juice or Coca-Cola, what you use this kind of stick, how you just uh, sweep, no, with the, uh, the pressure. So the same things is happen in the field area. When you put equipment out of the body, you just construct it in, in the specific way, and this equipment contains the same magra strength of fields or leader more strong, they extract the same what you have inside of you. So the tissue around is not distracted. Do you understand? You just take it out of the fields. And 
the tissue, um, what is the normal tissue from the uh, glandular mammae, starts to evolve itself and to heal itself. That's why uh, he never said that he is healing or curing something. No, he said that uh, he this is uh, the healing process of the plasma technology is to increase the processing of the body. Body uh, heal itself. Do you understand? Can you hear me, Mike? Yeah. Yes. L l let me go ahead and yeah. let me paraphrase this to make sure that yeah. I that I understand it correctly, so that yeah. our listeners understand it as well. So essentially, what 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 this technology does is it looks at a breast cancer, and mm -hmm. the breast cancer has a unique gravitational and magnetic signature to it that that yes. that, is, that is unique to, to breast cancer. Yes. So what this technology does is it has an external source that mm -hmm. creates an identical field, an identical signature to what the breast cancer looked like from a magnetic and gravitational point of view. It, 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 or it, more strong. Or uh, little more yeah, strong, but, but, be but, less. but 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 it, but it's stronger, so that it, it it what it will do is it will cause that signature of of the of the breast cancer of the diseased tissues mm -hmm. to leave the body and be yes. attract and be attracted to the to the stronger source. Therefore, the body no longer has to deal with this dysfunctional uh, magnetic gravitational signature anymore, and the body can therefore heal itself. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, I, I just just want to make sure I got that right, so that the listeners yes. can understand it. Yeah. Okay, and 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 what other um, um, you know, besides breast cancer, what I mean, you can apply this type of uh, of a technique uh, across a range of of, of ailments that, that affect human beings. Yeah, different kind of ailments. Uh, uh, he has so huge uh, approach about the ILS, MS, and and. Uh, really with good results and you're able to find out the cases in the web page of the Cash Foundation and also the YouTube channels and uh, now SSI University have uh, online teaching that was really great and even um, no need um, uh, the students to be some kind of profile and silent, uh, science. They could be absolutely normal people from the street and to attend this teaching and to see and to learn how actually the plasma fields work because that is the purpose of Mr. Cash, to give the knowledge to, to everyone and everyone to be able to create his food, his health, his transportation uh, system. So it means he give a knowledge to the humanity to be sustainable. Well, let's talk about, about food for a, a little bit yeah. um, because uh, one of the things that, that Mr. Cash says is that by duplicating the, the uh, signature, the, the uh, magnetic and gravitational signature of, um, you know, a food, uh, the, uh, of a food using the amino acids, that you can create whatever food you need without having to, you know, uh, go out and kill a cow or pick a banana or, or do anything yes. that, that, that foods can be uh, created uh, you know, based upon what their magnetic and gravitational signature looks like, that would be fully satisfying to, to the body. How, how does this work? But you have a uh, so great example in the Bible how Jesus done, how Jesus said this is the water and they transform to the wine. This is the same. Even is written in, in the Bible. So... Uh, so, so what, we're, what, what we're saying is that this is not a new technique. This, this is a technique that, that this is the knowledge of universe and uh, the civilizations and the prophets and the where people before us they knew it, but they are not able to spread around the people and the people to understand. So, if I come to you to explain you something, what you are not ready to understand, you just listen to me and 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 pass through, and and that's it. Point is now in our civilization that we reach a point is is like a, a huge percentage of humanity to be able to understand this knowledge and and to understand and to use. So not only to read is like a roman, no, to take an action to use it. 
Okay, so so it's hands on, it's direct, it's implementation, but yeah. but, but but really what 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 this this whole process is about then is giving the technology to all of mankind so that yeah. they could, as Jesus did, turn water into wine or turn water into any other substance that they may want it to be, depending upon what, what is required. And yeah. I tell you what, th this is a perfect explanation uh, for that, that uh, definition of a miracle where uh, – you know, Jesus created the created. Uh, he he had so many loaves of bread and so many fish, and he fed the whole multitude. Yeah. You know, it, it, the it, miracle is lack of knowledge. It's nothing miracle. Well, I, 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 to I have a knowledge. That was my point. Well, I, I understand. That's what that's what uh, science fiction author uh, Isaac Asimov said. He says mm -hmm. any sufficiently advanced technology will appear to primitive peoples as magic, and yes. and 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 that's that's what we're talking about here. What we're talking about is giving the gift uh, mm -hmm. to control the physical universe to all of mankind. That that's that's really what what I get from the the essence of, of what I've learned from Mr. Cash. Yes. And, and so the essence is the humanity to be sustainable because if something happened uh, like a cosmology normal process in our solar system or in our universe, we to be able to be sustainable in other place, to move to other place first and then to create our life. Because it's happened so many times in universe. This is nothing uh, you know, it, it is happening all the time in different planets, in different uh, solar system all, all over. So how uh, we know we are not only one civilization in our universe, we have so many. So I if something happened, how they're able to move and we are not. Why? Oh, okay. Because so we so, have a lack of knowledge. Okay. So, so w w w with this new knowledge, humanity on this planet will mm -hmm. become... A spacefaring race. Yes, we are. We're just not aware of it. <laughs> Tell us about that. What, what, what are we missing? We're missing, uh, I may say something what I know from the East and uh, different kind of uh, uh, knowledge what I get, that actually our human body is completely sustainable and uh, we have six chain of DNA. But before time ago, how they say, the different kind of civilizations. I don't know. I'm just saying, you know, what they know from the history books and like that. They close our five chains and now we use only one. So with only one DNA chain, what we have, the genes inside and all the information and the RNA, RNA what give the information to DNA realized in, in the matter level, we're able to do these things, what we do now. Do you understand? So we're supposed to increase our knowledge to the point that we start to open our closed DNA. If something is not going from the top down, if you move the base, the top move too. Do you understand? Oh yeah, yeah. So if you've so, got if if you've got a uh, a lamp standing on a table, if you mm -hmm. move the bottom of the lamp, the top of it moves as well. Yes. So yeah. if the RNA is it, not damaged, it's only our physicality DNA. We are able to retransend these fields to DNA because regarding how Mr. Kesh explained the seed of our human body, of our existence, is RNA. It is not like Western medicine thinks this is the DNA. Do you understand? And this is the completely match with East understanding of RNA and DNA, what, what is doing. Do you understand? Well, let's what talk, let's talk about that a little bit. You know, why is Western medicine and Western science so hung up on, on DNA when uh, Mr. Kesh and, and, and others are convinced that the RNA is, is the pathway to, to, to better health? To, to, yeah. uh, to, because let, let, let's uh, talk about that. Yeah, it is because it's stick to the matter level and uh, we just manage our matter existence and uh, p p probably it is not good for someone to people be aware that they they are not them bodies they are and they have a bodies they are souls 
first and then they have a bodies. And it, it is not how to say uh, good probably people to be aware about it. And they put them in the position to deal only with matter level. So from the matter level, it is important DNA because with DNA, you realize your matter existence. But actually, the seeds of everything is your soul and your RNA. This is the database fields where you contain, collect the fields, and these fields, they are realized through the DNA to your physicality. But well, first, you are a soul, not the body. Oh, no, I, I, I agree on that one. I, and the, the analogy that I use is that this, uh, this meat suit that I walk around in is merely uh, housing for, for, for my soul. And, and Ilya, we have our next break coming up right now at the yeah, top of the hour. Uh, we're going to hey, take about four minutes. We'll be right back. Yeah. If you need to go grab a glass of water or something, and now's a good yeah. time. Okay. And we'll be, <laughs> we'll, we'll be right back with more with yeah. Dr. Okay. Ilya Kostova. Be right back. Good afternoon. Welcome back. This is Mike Harris broadcasting on www.veteranstoday.com. Go to the VT radio link down there and you can just uh, click right on and listen to the show or go to www.freedomslips.com, Studio B Revolution Radio. So, uh, you know, we, we fi it looks like we finally have the bugs worked out of our simulcasting uh, issue here. And, uh, you know, onward and upward, you know, uh, better days are ahead. Anyway, today is Wednesday, June 3rd, 2015, and my guest today is Dr. Ilya Kostova. Ilya, welcome back. Yeah, hello. Hello. And, and as, a, as, as a personal note, I've met Ilya in person, and I'm telling you, she is um, as pretty as any James Bond girl you've ever seen. She's just a, <laughs> a, a, a lovely woman, just a lovely woman. Thank and, you, uh, and she, make she, me shine, huh? she, she, she's very sweet. She's very nice. I'm sorry to, to embarrass you and make you blush, but uh, it's true. <laughs> Thank you. It's true. Anyway, so you know, in the West, we're all preoccupied with the DNA, and we think that by manipulating the DNA of organisms, that we can achieve better organisms, stronger. There, there's a there's a whole outrage about the, the GMO foods. That are coming out now that they're that they're not healthy that they're actually unhealthy for us, but you know where did this paradigm come from where the West thinks about DNA and, and really overlooks the you know if you if you follow the 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 plasma theory uh, the RNA is far more important you know uh, how are we going to reconcile these two things? So uh, if you know uh, have so famous vegan bodybuilding man, he is around 70 years old. He never eaten meat, anything, and he is the perfect body. So Th This is the guy who they wrote the book called The China Study yes. about, correct? Yes. I, yes. Have, I, have, I have a copy on my bookshelf. I'm trying to remember his name. Yeah, I don't, but you know for who I'm speaking about. And I have a lot of patients where they're bodybuilders with the steroids and everything, and the 30 years they have a heart attack, and all the body is damages like a sponge. So what is the difference for you? Well, and all the people which is living like 105 or 10 or 20 years, they are vegans and, and life in, in the normal mountain environment. So where is the truth? Well, so what, what, what conclusions do you draw from, from this, uh, you know, uh, these facts, you know, what, 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 so that everyone should become a vegan? No, it is you eat what your body needs. But uh, regarding the Easter theosophy, uh, you know that you have energy body chakras and everything. You are aware of it. Yes, and, yes. Uh, we, we, all we are, the chakras are... they have a frequency, frequ uh, the frequency range, and all the food have a frequency range. What the food your body needs. You mean in, in that frequency range, you work, uh, your body working now. Do you understand? So when you increase your frequency, then you need other f fuel to take it in, other food, because the food for you is fuel, is, is, is like a petrol. Do oh, yeah, understand? yeah, that, that, that's the energy source so of, of the body. There's no yes. need to, uh, to suppress yourself or to make uh, yourself uh, so spiritual, to eating only sun if you're not able to do up to the moment. 
So it cre- increase your vibration of state if the, with different kind of techniques. And then when you need that kind of food, you just uh, diagnose yourself in what, in which one frequency range you are. Because if you take the food what is not related with your frequency range, you damage the machine and you get the diseases. Okay. Do you understand? Yes, I, I do. I understand actually. But you said so, that you said that there are techniques that people can use to change the frequency range. What might some of those techniques be? Okay. So one famous is meditation. It means to uh, relax your body uh, how much you are able to do and to clean your mind with the thoughts and uh, not, not good emotions. It is famous techniques what you have. Other way, this is the way of living and the way of the perception of all the life. You are understanding how you're supposed to live. And the East we call universal laws or, the, or Dharma laws and the... Uh, they are written everywhere. If you are able to follow them, you live in, in the uh, completely other belief system. You live in the completely other way. You understand the reality in, in the completely different way. So when you start to do all of these things, you just machine adjust to that environment. And actually your mind creates your reality and your body follows it. Okay, let me, so, let, me, let me paraphrase this another way. Yeah. So uh, you have a computer, and it's a machine, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you have an operating system that mm-hmm. tells the computer how to operate, how to work, how to do things. Mm-hmm. So really what you're advocating here is the Western operating system that goes on in, in human beings' brains dictates that they live this Western way of life. Whereas the Eastern uh, philosophies have the Eastern operating system working, which mm-hmm. directs how they live their lives in different ways as well. Mm-hmm. Each operating system has some benefits. Each has some, some, some drawbacks, but, but, but both of them have merit and both of them have deficits. How, uh, you know, can you kind of outline what, what, what some of those differences in how the Western mind works versus the Eastern mind? What, what are some of the more obvious things that occur to you? Obvious thing is, 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 is that in East, when Western people go to the East, for them, the life is just so slow. You know, it, it's like you come from fourth dimension to the third or 2D. Everything is slow. And understanding of the people is, is that their life in eternity, that will happen. Doesn't matter when, you know, their life in peace. They are not in a hurry. They are, they are not uh, uh, in anxiety. Something will happen sometimes. So this is them consciousness, them uh, understanding that they exist for eternity. They are living uh, on the level of the spirit and the level of the soul. They are not living because of them bodies. Okay, so really the, the difference, the, the, the fundamental difference that, you, that I just heard you say is that the Easterners, uh, Eastern operating system for, for how their minds work is that they realize that they are immortal beings and that their time on this earth is limited and that they're, that they're going to continue on afterwards. Yeah. Whereas in the Western beliefs, we're all centered around religion and religion wants you to do certain things in order to be able to live an eternal life. And if you don't do those certain things, there's bad punishments that happen to you. That's the old uh, paradigm of heaven and hell. And I, I, I think that is that might be one of the biggest causes of stress and anxiety in yeah. the Western is in Western world is is the fear that that comes with once you die you may be punished for all eternity. That's that that's a terrible way of thinking. Yes, I uh, have one famous book. I read it really in my uh, schooler age, but it's really famous. I cannot say the author because I forgot. But this is the. Comparison between the Christianity, um, Muslims, and the Torah. What is the uh, understanding and how this knowledge come to the people? And uh, the first come the Buddhism, Hinduism, all the ancient knowledge, essays, and then the Muslim, and then the Torah. And actually they say that all this is the true knowledge. I mean, this is like, upgrade of the universal knowledge 
but uh, in different social models what we built in our planet, they, they, they just transform this ancient knowledge in the way of religion. So they put manipulation part inside and they modify, you know? Oh, yeah, I, I know, I know. I, I've, Do you understand? So yes, actually yes. everything is one. It is universal knowledge but modified by humans to, um, to be useful for some kind of rural society and others to be just slaves around, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, that, that, so that's 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 what I've, I have. the true knowledge. In is the just still poor knowledge e exist? Do you understand? If, if if someone wanted to find this true knowledge, where would they look for it today? Uh, I pass a lot of uh, ways to find out this, and one day I just realized that the knowledge is inside of you. Whatever plans you take and however uh, educations you take with different kind of uh, corner of the planet with gurus and shamans and this and that, finally you're just sitting under one palm tree and you find out that the truth is inside of you. And first you have to change yourself and then the, everything what's happened to you will change because like uh, Mr. Cash said, Two plasmas, they are dense, and um, the plasmas with the equal strength, they attract the equal strength plasmas to them. So if I am not able to change myself, I live in, in the in the state of anxious, fears, everything, uh, the low frequency uh, feelings, I will attract the same situations to me all the time. So first I have to change myself how we say in the east, the, uh, the frequency level, but how Mr. Cash said the, uh, the strength of Maghreb, of your existence, then you will attract the same around you, the same situations. With, because what is meaning the situation? It is not failures and not winners. Everything is lessons. Something happened to you to show you something, to teach you something. You know, it's nothing wrong with anything. And we just humans have a habit to judge. This is wrong. This is good. This is wrong. This is good. No, this is just lessons. You, you take a lessons to show you something, to change, to evolve in some way. And that's all. Okay. Okay. Well, let me, let me switch subjects on you a little bit because something you said earlier uh, resonated with me. And that was you said that uh, there's other civilizations out there that we may or may not be aware of, and mm -hmm. that, that, that there's many of them throughout this universe. Uh, mm -hmm. what, what, what can you tell us about that? What, what do you know about this? What everyone knows now in our planet, mostly in the Theosophy Society, we, they have different kind of races, and uh, they have uh, uh, some kind of, of them, they are more technocrats, the other they are more spirituals, but they are more evolved regarding us now because they follow the universal laws and they're able to, to play with them. We still learn how to use them in, in, in the, our um, daily life and they know how to do these things and they evolve more fast because they're with uh, synchronicity of universe. So we are kids of universe. You, we, we cannot deny these things. No, no, we, we, we can't. We are all uh, part of the universe. We're, we're, we're part, yes. of, we're part of, so uh, we, of this we're great creation. We're supposed to live with these uh, laws. We build because of these laws, you know? Mm -hmm. we, we cannot create our laws with the opposite of universal laws. It's not working. Just Okay, so, so really, uh, what's holding mankind back right now? If, if, I, if I'm, I'm going to take a leap of faith here, but what's, mm -hmm. ho what, what's holding mankind back is the fact that we're not living in harmony with the universal laws, we're, we're, we're living in defiance of them, and it's hurting us. Yeah, and we destroy ourselves, and, and is, we destroy and kill um, people to people. How many lions kill themselves? No, or how many palm tree, trees kill each other?
Well, that that that's the thing, you know. Uh, no other species. I mean, uh, you you know, you you take bears, you take lions, you take wolves. Yes. I mean, you know, they'll go out and they'll get in fights to see who's tougher and bigger and stronger yeah. to to see this, but they don't destroy each other. They don't kill yeah. each other. Uh, man, so, man, mankind seems to be the only creature on the planet that is hell bent on 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 killing themselves. You know, killing yeah. others, killing others of their own kind. Well, you know, how do you explain this? It's because uh, we are not thinking how to help to each other. We are all the time in 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 the competition condition. We just have to win something every hour, you know. Because we know that our time is, is short. We are living like. 40, 50, 60, 80 years, and we're supposed to achieve regarding our belief system something, which in, in different, in, in different uh, so social models around the planet, this is something which regarding the social model, you know? we all the time in the hurry to achieve these things, you know? Because we know that here we are uh, limited in time. This is our belief system that we live uh, 60 years, and is, and that's it. We die. Okay, so if we if we could come to universally, this is actually, the fear of death. Do you understand? Yes. Everything is based of, based on the fear of death, and of the fear of death, you start to be competition to other one species uh, to uh, establish your survival and of your offsprings you understand yes yeah yes i do you, you want to give your kids a leg up because that's your 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 genetic projection into the future yes and that is the stupidity because actually like a banks we're not dying we just change the vehicles well, I, we, we, we do, and I, I, I look at this, and one of my realizations that, that made me realize that, yes, indeed, I do have a soul, is, is that when I was a, a young boy, you know, like three, four, five years old, I, I had a sense of who, my, who I was as myself. As I got older, became a teenager in my 20s, you know, I, I, I grew up, I, you know, part, you know my, my physicalness changed, but my sense of self always stayed the same. And then in my 30s, I, I age and 40s, and you know, as I as I get older, I continue to watch the body change, but that spark that's inside of me uh, never changed. That 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 thing that made Mike Mike is still there. It's the same. It hasn't yes. aged. It hasn't changed. It is steady. It, it it is constant, and that is is my personal proof. For that, that yes, we actually do have a soul. Yes, and interesting is how long you keep this feeling that much your vehicle stay young, because our body is proven that that machine supposed to work two hundred years. Two two hundred. Yes, without any damages, and two. not aging, nothing. Two hundred years. Well, I, I'm, I'm doing something wrong because I'm aging. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm telling you, and, and because of that, everything what we do in, in our planet just uh, make this process speedy. If uh, everything was like a conditions where they settled from the beginning, we're supposed to live 200 years and use these bodies 200 years without any damages, any diseases, nothing. Well, that, that, that's a wonderful thought. You look at the biblical references where you had guys uh, in Noah's time, uh, you know, in Adam's time, who are living to be eight, nine hundred years and older. I mean, that, that, that's a tremendous uh, uh, lifespan compared to what we have today. And actually, we have nothing because if you go to India and and when you have, and when you say that you are sixty or seventy years old, you say, "Oh, you still a teenager for them." Well, I, I, I understand. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I wish. <laughs> I wish no, I no, because they say to uh, seventy, sixty years, you are able to get the, just piece of knowledge. And when you get the piece of knowledge, then you have to implement in life. So for 70 years, what first to do? That is them understanding, you understand? Because their life is in eternity for them. 
Maybe because they're looking at life as beyond the physical. They're looking at it as, as, as something beyond it. But I, I don't understand that whenever we die, you know, I, w- what happens next? There's a theory of reincarnation. There's, there's all sorts of theories out there, but, but no one really knows. Like I said, the one thing I do know is that, that the soul that I've had inside of me since I was a, a, a very young boy has not changed. Yes, you have different kind of uh, theories, approach, and uh, for me, because I'm more a uh, logistic person, for me, this is the database, what we upgrade with our experience, and then we bring this experience to more huge other one database, you know, what we call in Theosophic Common Soul. This is like a server, you know, you just collect the data, is like individual PC, and then you bring the data to the server, and they keep it there. And then other experience, uh, other experience, like that. Everything is to collecting the data, like cartoon network. Okay, well, let me, let me ask you another question in a, in a slightly different direction here. Mm-hmm. Uh, you also mentioned that there's other civilizations out there. Uh, what of these other civilizations are you aware of? Can you tell us a little bit about them as, as to what you've heard, what you've seen, what you know? About which one civilization, which is not from planet Earth? Yes, yes, yes. So, what they know, they have a different races, uh, in, in different state of uh, evolution, in some planet they have even races where they're not evolved like us either. But in, in other celestials and, and planets they have so technocrat civilizations and uh, they have some kind of um, society where they call the Galactic Federation, it's written everywhere now even in, in challenging of different kind of uh, more sensual people they uh, able to download different kind of uh, information. Also, uh, when we speak about the parallel uh, uh, reality, this is actually in the banks where they are not visible for us, so they exist around us, but where they are, they are not visible for us because they are beyond our... Uh, our, our, our sensory perception? Except, yeah, of the eyes. So for us, they are not visible. If we are go in some other planet and we are not merged to the frequency in that planet, we will be also invisible for them. Okay. So I, I, it's I, full of different kind of banks where they vibrate in, 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 in different frequency. Do you understand? Well, I'm I'm trying to believe me. This is a struggle for me, but I'm I'm trying to understand this. And uh, this this different frequency issue is a challenge for me. I mean, we 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 heard, I hear things about that we live in the third density, and that that yeah. we're evolving into the fourth or fifth density. That we're moving up in 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 frequency here. Uh, you know, can you explain some about that? Because th- this is this is something that that I don't have a, an adequate knowledge base about. Yeah, the Russians, they are so good in, 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 uh, in that investigation. They have uh, a lot of authors where they describe these things. And um, actually, what they know, I will tell you how I know the shadow of these things. So the, the main database, what we call God, Creator, I call Master of the Game, because it's really Master of, of all the game, is exists in, in the third dimension. Then uh, start to descending or decompression of the information to the seven level. In the seven level, you exist like a bank, single bank. And that single bank decides what kind of experience wants to have. It's from the five, four, three, or one. One is its mineral kingdom. Second dimension is the plant. Third, third in, in the half. Four is our uh, humanoid shape. Five dimension is like uh, angels, metatrons, like that. So when you descend to the seven, then there, like a single being, you are uh, f- female a- a- and the male energy in one being. 
and you separate to two half. One half descend to the level when you want to get experience. Other half ever stay on, on the 70 and rule you. This is like they call this the silver net. And with the silver net, just manage you to stay on the road and to fulfill your mission for what you descend. So this is the philosophic explanation what they have in the East, like India, China, and, and other countries. But actually, this is the, the fields where they modify themselves. Do you understand? Mr. Cash explained in other way. He explained that the soul is formed on the planet. So if you are being from the planet Earth, when combination of the RNA of the father and mother, they create new being. But we speak about the soul being. And this soul created now on the planet Earth and starts to get experience. For him, reincarnation doesn't exist. I, I've heard that that reincarnation yeah. doesn't exist. That that's just yeah. a it, it's just a, a rumor. It, it, it's another way to solve what what you know people with with limited uh, information try to solve. And so, yeah. you know, how how do we access this, this higher level of information so we can all become more informed and uh, more knowledgeable? This is regarding. Uh, it is called awareness of your consciousness. Is mean how much information your brain is able to operate. Okay. Because now in our society, it is measured that we are able to operate not more, it's like a one to four percent of capacity of our brain because brain is a computer. Operate with database. Okay. All right, the brain's very computer-like. They've been trying to create, uh, you know, uh, artificial intelligences by emulating yeah. the human brain for for some time. They they haven't done it yet. Anyway, Ilya, we're going to be coming up to our our, our next break here pretty soon, and um, I, I have uh, I, I got a note from Gordon Duff, who is the senior editor of Veterans Today, that yes. that he's asked to come on for the, the last thirty minutes of the show because there's there's some breaking news coming out of Syria yeah. and Iran. Mm -hmm. and, and so, um, you know, I, I really want to thank you for joining us. You have been a wonderful guest. And uh, I'd you. like to have you back on again someday soon. And, yeah. uh, and I hope you and I uh, can stay in touch. I hope I see you soon. Yeah, thank you very much, Mike.